Okay, once again, sorry for the delay. I'm sorry, Don, I got to put you on the spot. I guess Don is not going to make it today. You'll have to chair the meeting. Did you get that done? Yep, got it. Okay. Is everybody else ready? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, I haven't got that paper. Okay. Committee of Adjust Adjustment and Consent Granting Authority. Sulaco Committee Adjustment and Consent Granting Authority, September 1st, 2020, 5 p.m. Council Chambers. Um, open the meeting at 514. Uh, determining uh, quorum. Determination of quorum. Is uh, Sylvia there? Hi, I'm Don. Just... Yes, I'm here. Okay. We have a quorum. Yes. Yes. Uh, Don is not here. So Don and Corey, we have quorum. Okay. Any updates? Sylvia? Sylvia there? Sorry, I just want to make sure that my microphone's working properly. Okay. All right, we are, the first update is a planning coordinator resignation. And our second update is that we're going to be moving Agenda item 7.6 to with 7.2. It sounds 7.6 with 7.2. Yes, because they're so. concurrent applications. Okay. I'm gonna turn that paper. Call the meeting to order. Is there no other items to uh, be dealt with? Yeah. Okay, we'd like to make a motion to open the meeting. Yep. Call and the meeting. It, will be, Go ahead. it will be moved by Don or Corey? I'll, uh, Don will do it. Thank you. And seconded. Corey? Yes. Yeah. Corey seconds. Thank you. And we move that the Committee of Adjustment meeting of September 1st be declared open and called to order at 513. Okay. 
uh, motion to accept of, okay review the corrections to the agenda we did that already motion to adjourn the adjourn motion to approve the agenda as submitted and amended and who would like to move it Corey moves it there we go second dawn yeah and the motion the committee of adjustment approved the agenda submitted okay uh, disclosure of uh, pecuniary interest and general nature thereof i have none i have none either thank you Uh, minutes of committee meeting of March 10th, 2020. Review corrections to the minutes. Any corrections? None. Motion to approve None. the minutes submitted by the Enter your meeting ID followed by pound. Who would like to move it? Corey will move it. Yeah, Corey, uh, Thank second. you. Second by Dawn. Thank you. Uh, business arising from the minutes. There are none. Okay. You are in the meeting. Can you stand up? Can you close the thing up? From? Okay, so we no delegations. <laughs> Oh, Sylvia. All right, can you hear me? No, you're good. End call. Okay. okay. Thank you. All right, Don and Corey, sorry. It's all good. Let's carry forward. Moving on to application. Yep. Uh, are you ready? And pr procedures, please, for consent application. Do you have a Public copy, Don? I can read it out for you if yep. you want. I got it here. Okay. Okay, great. Public meeting notice. This is a public meeting to hear comments on consent application. The committee will hear comments and evaluate written submissions. The committee makes the final decision. There is a 20 day appeal period from the date of giving notice. Any person who objects to the proposed consent may do so in writing to the secretary treasurer and the committee and the committee and must attach a fee required for the appeal. This appeal will be forwarded to the local planning tribunal for review. Um, first one up, I think is, um, I've got to find it here. First, first application up, 7.1. 7.1. Secretary Treasurer, can you read the up the presents a consent application to the committee? Yes. Um, the consent application CO1 2020 submitted from Ben Reynolds, Kenora District Services School, sorry, KDSP, to complete a lot line adjustment to merge lots 14 and 16 and 18 and 20 Bernier Way to construct two semi-detached dwellings for a total of four residential units on the subject land. So I have a presentation and I'd like to read it to you. Okay. An application for consent was submitted by Mr. Ben Reynolds, agent for KDSB to complete a lot line adjustment for the lots known locally as 14 and 16 and 18 and 20 Bernier Way to construct 
two semi-detached dwellings for a total of four residential units on the subject lands. The subject lands are legally described as lots 45, 46, 47, 48, plan 23M971. The applicant proposes to construct a semi-detached dwelling on each of the proposed lots for a total of four residential units on the subject lands. Currently, the land is vacant. Provincial policy statement. The proposed application for consent, consent is consistent with the relevant policies of the, of the provincial policy statement. Official plan. The official plan designation is residential and the property is located within the urban Sioux Lookout settlement area. The official plan encourages compatible development and a compact urban form and the proposed semi-detached dwellings are not anticipated to negatively impact surrounding land uses. The proposed application for consent conforms to the official plan. Zoning bylaw. The property is zoned residential type 2 R2 zone and the permitted uses in the R2 zone include semi-detached dwellings. An analysis. The application is in compliance with the official plan and the zoning bylaw. The proposed lots have sufficient lot frontage and area. Following the proposed lot, lot line adjustment, the resulting two lots would comply to the minimum standards of the R2 zone. Further, the proposed development, two semi-detached dwellings on both of the proposed two lots comply to the standards and provisions of the R2 zone. And, um, that's it, thank you. And we have comments. We received comments okay. on the application. Question comments from the applicant? Oh, no, we have. Uh, hang on a minute. Okay, we're at uh, committee chair members. We have comments from uh, Andrew Jewell, our public works manager. Okay. I can read them right now. Okay, that's good. Okay, my comments for this application are a reiteration of my comments provided for the Zoning Bylaw Amendment Application 03-2020, which also pertain to Burn Your Bay and Boreal Trail subdivision and are inserted below. I strongly recommend that no further development within Burn Your Bay occur within Burn Your Bay until the develop, subdivision developer completes the construction of the street, which mainly pertains to asphalt service servicing. Although I'm confident there are other deficiencies present as well. I just drove the street, bracket Burn Your Bay, and it would appear that they, brackets the developer, have now added additional granular material to raise the grade of the granular surface to the finished height of asphalt. In doing so, there are now manholes that are buried under aggregate and inaccessible completely unacceptable when there are two residents on the street that are occupied. More development anywhere in the subdivision will simply cause more issues for the municipality and all development will be halted until the subdivision is completed by the developer and the transfer of infrastructure completed through a certificate of acceptance with council's approval. And we received comments from Bell who had no concerns. Uh, committee members present uh, individual site inspection reports. I'll let you go ahead, Corey, with yours first. Okay. Uh, yeah, I went uh, and drove down to uh, Burn Your Way there, and Andrew is correct that uh, they just put granular down the whole road. Um, I'm, I'm guessing that it was supposed to be paved. Um, the manholes are covered. Um, Andrew stated before that he has major concerns with this um, and that no further development should be happening down Burn Your Way. Um, I don't know what your take is on this, Don, but um, these issues need to be resolved um, for me before anything else to be done on those properties. So I don't know if Jody, have you heard or talked to the developers about what's going to happen or are they going to fix that up or are they just leaving it the way it is? Uh, I've been waiting for direction from our CAO, Michelle. She's, uh, she's out of the office right now. But she has asked that Andrew and I and her meet to discuss these and then we will reach the developer with kind of the next steps. 
Well, it's kind of hard to go ahead with something when Andrew's telling us that he doesn't want any more development in there. And we have a meeting today to approve these. So <laughs> we're sort of in a, in a bind here. So I don't know what, what, what direction we can go. Can we, can we make a decision to, well, we'll discuss it, but if we make a decision to approve this, do we have to put a caveat in saying that nothing can be done or built until these issues are, are, are rectified? Um, maybe I'll let Jamie speak yes. to that, our planning consultant. Certainly, if, uh, if that is a concern of the committee, something that could be done is if you decide that you are satisfied with the variance themselves, uh, or sorry, satisfied with the consent application itself, it could be conditional upon approval of the application, or conditional approval of the application could include that the road be brought up to a state that's uh, um, satisfactory to the public works director. And then when he's satisfied, he can provide sign off and then the applicant application can take effect. Um, do you have, can you talk about the certificate of acceptance? I don't know, I'm not too sure what that is, to be honest with you, or if Jody can, what is the, uh, Jody, what is the certificate of acceptance that we need from the, the developer? Basically, it's the final sign off for the subdivision. And then I can't recall if there's usually a two year maintenance period or a two year kind of warranty period after that. But I'd have to look at the file. Like I said, I've been kind of waiting to discuss with the CAO and Andrew to what we plan to do for the next steps. But yeah, basically it's our accepting of the infrastructure okay. in, in this subdivision. Currently, so that, I'm not that today. Yeah. So that subdivision has been up and going for seven years and we still don't have that in our hands yet as a, from the developer to the municipality? Uh, we have been working with them over the years. They did clean up quite a bit in there and did some other work. Uh, we have had a, a, a kind of a third party inspection done later last fall to kind of go over some of these, kind of spell out some of the deficiencies in accordance with the kind of the, the subdivision design and layout. And so we have that report and we're just, like I say, I'm waiting on direction for next steps. Um, yeah, those, those manhole cover or those manholes being covered, that, that's not acceptable to me. Um, so that needs to be addressed. Um, I, what I'd like to hear from Don on his, Sorry? if he's gone and checked it out or what? Yeah, I have. I, I went by there and I had the uh, same concerns. The manhole cover is open to um, um, granular A going down into the manhole cover, down into the uh, sub, uh, sub base there on the piping. And the other thing I, I noticed that, uh, and I don't know how much we can do about it, but there was an overlot of uh, uh, there was no room to turn around there. There was a whole bunch of vehicles parked in there, and I don't know if that's going to be a problem for us or not. And uh, Jody? You're, you're mute, Jody. Can you hear me? Oh, sorry. Uh, regarding vehicles parked on the road itself, is what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, technically, I mean, once we take over, that's the municipal right away and they wouldn't be able to park in there or impede traffic. Okay. Once we take over though. Yeah, technically, yes. Okay. So um, where, where, where are you at, Don? With, uh, do, we, do we have, uh, I think I saw Ben's on, on here as well. If you want to give us sort of his, his view on things. Yeah, if you're there, Ben. I am, thank you, Mr. Chair. I also have Kevin uh, with us today. He's the project architect. So if there's uh, more technical questions that we need to direct to him, we'd be happy to have him uh, fill in the gaps. Um, really, the, uh, nothing to add to that. The, the, um, the planning report is very comprehensive, but the, the comment from the department, uh, the Public Works Department, did catch me off guard a little bit. Um, the KDFB wasn't aware of the, the struggles that the municipality was facing. 
Um, I think given the housing crisis that we shouldn't as a community let this stop us. I think KDSB can work with the municipality um, to put pressure on the developer if that's what we need to do um, to start moving things along. Um, so I would, I would at least request some, some conditional approval. Um, we do have a lot of milestones we need to meet with our funding agents to, to get ready for a tender in the winter and spring construction. So these little types of delays seem to uh, kind of accumulate on us in these types of projects. So I would respectfully ask for that if it's possible to have conditional approvals. Um, and we would be more than happy to, uh, to help in any way possible to put pressure on the developer. Um, we, we weren't aware that, that you were facing this, this situation in that area. So uh, it is news to us. Okay, well, well I think, uh, Corey, I don't know what you, I know you'd like to see the development stop, but I would like to see the um, uh, Jody Brinkman, our, our, our uh, person that, that can uh, work with uh, the developer and, and the uh, Finway, sub our Finway people to come to some kind of uh, agreement on what, what they're going to do in this specific uh, place, uh, item uh, that we're in right now. Yeah, yeah. I don't, uh, I don't want this development to stop one, one bit. Um, there just seems to be concerns. And then as we move to the, the next item, there's even more concerns. So um, as our public manager, our works manager has stated, if we keep on going down this road, these concerns are just going to build if they're not addressed. So I hope that uh, as Jody has indicated that they're going to sit down with the CAO and uh, try to address all this. I don't, I don't have an issue at all with, with the consent application. I, I think it's a great idea. Um, yeah. And I'm, I'm glad they're building in there. So, and if they can put, uh, put a bit of pressure, pressure on the developer to get that fixed up, we would appreciate that immensely as a, as a municipality. So I think uh, yeah, I, I'm okay with the consent, um, but things things need to get fixed in there. And I don't know where where Jody Jody sits on this. I don't I don't I don't Andrew didn't uh, wasn't invited or he just sort of put his comments in. Jody, do you know? If uh, yeah, he put his comments in, and he's just like he started putting pressure, I guess in regards to the subdivision just recently, based with that last zoning bylaw amendment. So okay. that's kind of pushing us to, yeah, like, like I say, I've reached out to Michelle and we're gonna hopefully get the ball rolling on that and come to some kind of compromise here in the near future. And not compromise, but schedule plan to get this subdivision finalized. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm good to go with it. Um, I just hope things, don't or things get done in that subdivision that need to get done because I don't want to be coming back all the time and well they you allowed this to happen um, and things are still not done so we're are we just putting ourselves in a bind later down the road that's my concern so again I have no no issue with with this development one bit I, I appreciate that they're developing in there so and I hope uh, hope there's more and more development going on. So, but if you're going to be sitting down, with the CAO, and hopefully with the developer and and getting things cleaned up, um, then we're we're good to go. But I guess what we'll see next time when we come to the table with something that wants to be developed in there, and if, if nothing's done, then we're going to have to make a stand at some point. Yes. So those are my concerns uh, and. I'm okay with going ahead with the consent application. Okay, thanks, Corey. Um, I feel the same way. I don't want to. I don't want to stop the application, but um, I want to see some. Uh, I, we should be seeing some positive things coming out to try and keep this project moving forward. And that's between the developer and uh, the agent for KDSB, I would believe, to, and the municipality to work to work things out. Okay, moving on. Is there a presentation by the applicant or the agent? Uh, 
Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, okay. we haven't we haven't prepared anything further than the report. So uh, happy to answer any questions. Okay, well, I have no questions. You were in on the discussion that's already happened, and uh, and see what you can do with it, and hopefully it works out for everybody concerned. Yes, thank you. And just to reiterate our, our willingness, or at least uh, our desire to help with that issue, if uh, I can connect with Jody uh, following the meeting. Oh. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, presentation from de delegations, public in attendance. Anybody from the public want to comment? Hearing none, we'll move on. Question, comments from the table. We've already done that. And nobody else Don, out there want to comment? Yes. Hi, it's Donna. I'm sorry I joined late. That's what happens yeah, when good. you give an old person technology. <laughs> I got locked <laughs> out for 30 minutes because I couldn't remember my password. Um, I, okay. I'm assuming we're talking about uh, lots 14, 16, 18, and 20 Bernier. Yes. And yep. I guess my comments. only comment is when I took a look, yeah, when I took a look at the site, was a drainage at the rear? I don't know if you guys, I mean, I know you're talking oh, probably about the development that's, that hasn't been completed and that's another issue. Yeah. And you probably may have touched on that. I just wanted to bring that out as well. Okay, yes, that is there. Uh, I see it uh, on the sketch that they had, that they had uh, drainage in the back of it there somewhere. I believe. Yeah, it's, it's got to be better than what it is, though. What's happened right now is there's just a huge ditch. It looks like an excavator went back there and just created a, a large um, a containment area, if you will, where the water can run to. But certainly not anything that anybody would want to live with. Yeah. So I'm not okay. sure, Jody or um, or others at the municipality, what what the agreements are or what's in place with the developer. But certainly that's another aspect aside from the the road being completed and the asphalt, etc. I can answer that. It's Jamie Robinson, the planning consultant. Any of these issues related to the road or related to drainage on the property are matters that can be addressed at the building permit stage and are matter, they would be required to provide a lock creating plan at the building permits stage for each of the proposed units. What, um, so those, those issues can be adequately addressed. Um, really the focus here tonight is, is it appropriate to modify the lot boundaries on the lots is really the core issue at, at hand today. And um, yeah. so to your comment, uh, those issues can be addressed at the building permit stage. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Um, I'll put the motion on the table for a vote. Uh, all in favor? Yes. I'm yes. I'm yes. Donna, you're still there? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, motion is passed. The chair explained that the application is approved. Uh, if approved, there is a 20 day appeal period. If there is no appeals, then the applicant may proceed to transfer the property upon completion of a survey and any conditions contained in the approval. If not approved, the decision may be appealed to the local planning of tri appeals tribunal. If deferred, application will be heard at the next meeting and the date. Okay, I think that's it for that. It's been approved. Can we have a mover? Um, we yes. need a mover. Yeah. I, I can move it. I can move it. Thank you. Okay, Donna for one, Corey for two. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay, anything else? Are you there, Donna? Yep, I'm here. You're doing a fine job, okay. Donna. Do you want me to Are you 
Do you want me to yeah, take yeah. over or are you okay? No, you can go ahead. Okay, so moving right along then, uh, we're going to uh, we're going to talk about the uh, the second uh, consent. I guess it's a consent as well as a minor variance, and it's to do with an application for 19 and 21 Miller Crescent. Um, Sylvie, are you there? Can you pr present the uh, the report for us? Yeah. Yes, it is. Eh? I don't know where Jody went. But... No, he's still there. I see him. Is Sylvie there? Though usually she reads the report. If not, I can. Yeah. She was there. I'm here. She is. Well, me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Applications for consent and minor variants have been submitted by Finway General Contractor, owner of the subject lands, 19 and 21 Miller Crescent, legally described as plan M 852 lot 17 and 18. The applicant is proposing to divide the properties in order to permit a total of four townhouse dwellings. The existing two lots will be subdivided into two lots each in order to facilitate the proposed townhouse dwellings. Provincial policy statements. The proposed application for consent is consistent with the relevant policies of the provincial policy statement. Official plan. The official plan designation is residential and the property is located within the urban Sioux Lookout settlement area. The permitted uses in the official plan include a range of housing types and tenures. Section 3.1.2 includes policies for compatible development and a compact urban form. The proposed housing type as a townhouse dwelling contributes to achieving a compact urban form. The proposed application for consent conforms to the official plan. Zoning bylaw. The, pro the property is zoned residential type 2 R2 zone and the permitted uses in the R2 zone include townhouse dwellings. As noted in the proposed lot statistics and R2 zone requirements, the proposed interior lots, lot 2 and lot 3, require minor variances for lot area and frontage in order to permit the proposed development. The four tests of a minor variance are reviewed as follows. Is the variance in keeping with the intent of the official plan? The subject properties are designated as residential in the official plan. A range of housing types are permitted and a compact urban form is encouraged. The proposed reduction in lot area and frontage will enable the builder to provide a more attainable unit and contributes to achieving a compact urban form. The variance is in keeping with the intent of the, the official plan. Number two is the variance in keeping with the intent of the zoning bylaw. The subject properties are located within the residential type 2 R2 zone. Permitted uses in the R2 zone include a variety of residential uses including townhouse dwellings. Variances are re requested for relief from the minimum lot frontage and lot area provisions to provide for adequate amenity space and to maintain the character of the neighborhood. The variance is in keeping with the intent of the zoning bylaw. Number three, will the variance provide for the desirable development of land? The subject properties are designated and zoned for residential use and the proposed reduction to lot frontage and areas for the interior lots would appear to represent a desirable form of development for the area. Is the variance minor? Based on the three previous tests and pictures of the site and aerial imagery, proposed requested reductions to the lot frontage and lot area are modest. The proposed variances to minimum lot frontage and minimum, minimum lot area are minor and it would appear that the four tests of a minor variance have been met. And we have received comments on the consent and minor variance applications. I see that. Um, can you share some of those comments that we've received and, and just how I guess we need uh, maybe Jamie to uh, to chime in here as well with respect to um, again how relevant they are with respect to the actual consent 
and uh, and the um, well, we're dealing with two here. We're dealing with both the consent and the minor variants. But uh, could you share those, Sylvia? Uh, I'll share them. Thank you, Donna. So these are again from Andrew Jewell, our public works manager. Uh, the existing water, sanitary sewer, and stormwater servicing to the two lots and are the focus of this application were installed at the time of the subdivision development for planned semi-detached housing and stormwater services to the additional lots. Oh, sorry, just a second. Therefore, the severance into additional lots, if approved, would require an additional water, sanitary sewer and stormwater services to the fourth lot because this subdivision and all associated infrastructure has not been transferred to the municipality through the subdivision agreement process, which would include the issuance of a certificate of, of acceptance and approval by council through the bylaw process. There is an anomaly as to who would be responsible for installing additional services from the existing mains to the property lines as the water main is under the operation of Northern Waterworks as the operating authority for the municipality, but the municipality is not responsible for any of the surface works, pavement, stormwater catchments, curb and gutter, street lighting, etc. in the subdivision. Another concern is that the existing water and sanitary sewer servicing was designed and installed to be outside of any future entrances for the parcel slash lot fabric as originally intended for 70 detached lot fabric. If the lot fabric is allowed to reconfigure to allow for townhouse development, entrance locations will change from the original design and this could result in water services being located within an entrance, which causes concern for damage to the water services curb stop from conducting snow removal activities in the entrance and also promotes the risk of freezing water services as frost penetration is far greater within an entrance than outside an entrance. When the municipality reviewed the subdivision design drawings back in 2010, Prior to initiating construction, the design for the water and sewer servicing did incorporate having services located outside of the planned entrances. Another concern is that the original curb and gutter, gutter already has drop curbs constructed for predetermined entrance locations based on the original lot fabric design. When the changes were allowed to the lot fabric for the parcels to the north to accommodate row housing, the existing curb and gutter configure and entrance configuration was not modified to accommodate the change in entrance locations. And one of the new units now has an entrance curb outside of a drop location, semi-mountable curb and gutter. To summarize, if the severance is allowed, the new entrance locations should have the curb and gutter modified for an entrance drop at the location of the entrance as well as to ensure that any existing water and sewer servicing is outside of any proposed new entrances. Further to the concerns listed above, there is now an existing dispute between the municipality and the subdivision developer as to who is responsible for winter control activities on the roads within the subdivision as the municipality has not assumed the roads through the subdivision agreement with the issuance of a certificate of acceptance and the passing of a bylaw through council. Additionally, there are street lights in the vicinity of where this consent is requested that have not worked for several years due to what is believed to be an issue with the underground power supply to the street lighting and a repair has not been initiated after bringing the issue forward to the subdivision developer a few years ago. Residents who have already reside in this area, Miller Crescent, have placed complaints to the municipality on several occasions about street lights not working but it's believed that this issue has not been resolved to date. Based on all the concerns above, I would recommend that no further development be allowed in the subdivision until the subdivision has been completed and issued a certificate of acceptance by the municipality. Then to then eliminate the potential for further concerns regarding snow plowing, street lighting responsibility, et cetera. Completion of the subdivision would include, but is not limited to the construction of sidewalks, completing the stormwater drainage system, paving all the streets, et cetera. And that's it. Thank you, Jody. Yeah, um, I think uh, I think similarly um, with the, the consent, um, 
uh, Donald, you can, I, I'm not sure that we can, we can adequately at, in the Committee of Adjustments deal with uh, those issues. Um, Don, did you want to add something? Um, yes. Uh, prior to starting, they wanted uh, uh, applicant 7.2 and 7.6 to be merged together. They're both Finley for the same property. I think that was read in already, Don. Yeah, yeah. Change in the order of the the seven point two and seven point six will be done together. Yeah. Okay. So I think. Um, so, yes, we're gonna we're gonna deal with the consent first, and then we're going to deal with the minor variance, but both to do with these two properties. Yes. Sorry, okay. I cut somebody off. Who who had a comment to make? That's all right, Donna. Uh, it's Corey. Um, I think the only, now can we put in the caveat to have the curbing and gutters modified? Can we, do we have the authority to do that at our, at our committee level? Or Jamie can answer that? Yeah. yeah. Conditions, I would think. Through you, Madam Chair, um, I've been listening to the comments and it may be appropriate for the committee to consider including a condition that indicates that updated engineering plans for servicing and for entrance for servicing entrance locations and curbing be provided to the satisfaction of the municipality i think a condition along that lines would satisfy the um the requirements of the engineer and what that would enable if this committee determines that the reconfiguration of those lots is appropriate at this time it would allow the proponent to provide plans to that satis to the satisfaction of the of the uh, engineering department. And once Mr. Jewell was satisfied on, with the plans, he could sign off on the plans. The consent could take effect, and then it would be constructed accordingly. So I think that would be an appropriate condition for the committee to consider based on those comments. And and regarding the. The last ones they did to the north, they, I believe that he said that one of the one of the units has a curb in front of it, doesn't have an access. Is that sort of passes there, by now, and that's the way it is? So there, through your worship, that's really not an issue for this committee to consider at this time. That's a, uh, something that's been completed. Um, I would think that that's not um, would be covered off by the subdivision agreement, and the municipality could look towards the subdivision agreement to ensure that gets rectified. Just to speak to that as well, they aren't, uh, they are what's called semi-mountable curbs. So it's not like, you know, you see that six inch curb lift on down the roads and stuff. And then the drop curbs for entrances, they're actually, it's, you can drive in essence over all the curbing in the subdivision because mm -hmm. it's not a raised curb is what I'm getting at. Hmm. But I agree. Yeah, I think the bigger issue here here is the yeah is the engineering piece, and uh, I think for our for our preview, it's it's not so much um, the agreements or the arrangement that has been made between this developer and the municipality, but rather if we see this as a uh, consent application that uh, that is something that is desirable, and if we approve it, certainly we could add that as a condition, as Jamie has shared that they need some updated engineering plans for the municipality and that there has to be some further um, discussion or dialogue that takes place uh, before they can proceed. Thoughts? Uh, would that also, sorry, Donna, would that also include the, the water and water servicing? I believe you wanted something on the outside of the house. Three yeah, I think, Corey, that, go, go ahead, Jamie. Sorry, through you, Madam Chair. Uh, that was the reason for the wording, and I used the word um, servicing to cover off all aspects of that. Thank you, Jamie. Yeah, because it sounds, it really sounds like they have quite a few issues that need to be resolved with this subdivision and with the agreement that um, is in place and the transfer of the said agreement. And so I'm, and I'm not sure that that is, like I say, part of our preview. It's, it's more, more of um it's more of a, a matter that needs to be taken up between those two parties. So is there any further on the consent piece, which is basically the prop 
property known as 19 and 21 Miller Crescent, subdividing the two subject properties to create four lots and permit four townhouse dwellings in according with the attached sketch. And what, what is there any concerns or, or discussion that needs to happen with respect to that consent piece? Not from me. I, I'm going, okay, Don? No, I have nothing uh, on it. Okay, Jody, did we receive any other comments? Uh, no, those are the only comments. I believe we actually, sorry, Bell had comments that they didn't have any concerns. Okay. Okay, then I want to, uh, I, I see this as, as, as something that is in keeping. I took a, I did do a site, a site visit, and it's very much in keeping with, uh, with the neighborhood. The development that has taken place is uh, multiple units. They are uh, similar to uh, the townhouse um, on either side of these two lots. So I don't, I don't have any concerns other than it's been brought up by the, by the um, public, public works department. I would concur with you, Donna. The, uh, what they built there looks very nice. Okay. So I need a mover and a seconder. Corey will move. Yep. I'll second it. Okay. So I have um, the municipality of Sioux Lookout Committee of Adjustments. It's moved by Corey Lego and seconded by Donald Fenlon that the consent application CO2 2020 for the property known locally as 19 and 21 Miller Crescent to subdivide the two subject properties, creating a total of four lots in order to permit a total townhouse dwelling of four in accordance with the attached sketch with the following conditions. And that is first that the following documents must be provided for the transaction. And that is an original executed transfer deed form, a duplicate original and one photocopy for our records, a schedule of the transfer deed form on which to set out the entire legal description of the parcel in question, and C, a reference plan of survey, which bears the land titles office registration number and signatures as evidence of its deposit therein, illustrating the parcel to which the consent approval relates. And finally, the second, is condition or actually yeah second condition is confirmation by way of survey that the existing buildings meet the requirements of the zoning bylaw on the proposed lots and then a third condition that we're going to place on this consent is that they require an updated service in slash engineering plan to be prepared for the municipality for their discussion and further action does that sound okay jamie Yep, that sounds great. All those in favor? Yes, Corey. Yes, Don. Okay. Carried. So the second the second piece to this is a minor variance application. And this is M05 2020 for 19 and 21 Miller Crescent. And they are seeking relief from the section 5.221 and 2 to permit a reduced minimum frontage of 5.5 meters and a minimum lot area of 230 square meters for the two proposed interior lots on the subject lands, therefore constructing four townhouse units on the subject lands. So in reviewing this application for a minor variance, it was recommended by our planner that the minor variance application be approved to permit the minimum lot area of 230 square meters and a minimum lot frontage of 5.5 meters be approved to provide flexibility to the applicant prior to the completion of the required survey. Any further discussion on the, on the minor variance application? None from Corey. I have none also, thank you. Okay. Did we receive any comments or anything further on this, Jody, Sylvie? Uh, we received the exact same comments that Andrew gave for the consent. I don't think we need to repeat ourselves because we've already placed that condition. Uh, 
Jamie, your, your input here would probably be valuable, but I don't think we need to repeat what we've already placed as a condition on the consent piece. Yeah, um, through you, Madam Chair, there is no need to provide a condition as part of the variance. You're correct, the condition has appropriately been applied to the consent application. Okay, so I need a mover and a seconder. I move it, Don. Corey, Corey seconds. Okay, all those in favor? Corey in yes. Favor, yes. Okay, it's carried. Did you guys want me to repeat what the, um, I will. It's the Committee of Adjustment moved by Don Finlan, seconded by Corey Lego, minor variance application M05-2020 for 19 and 21 Miller Crescent to seek relief from this, the section 5221 and two to permit a reduced minimum frontage of 5.5 meters and a minimum lot area of 230 square meters for the two proposed interior lots on the subject lands to construct four townhouse units on the subject lands. The recommendation is in reviewing it. Uh, the, the, it is a minor variance and we are approving to permit the lot area coverage of 230 square meters and minimum lot frontage of 5.5 meters and it's been passed. Sylvia, I'm actually filling out these, uh, I printed them off and I'm filling out these motions. And so I'll drop them off to you at the office and then both Corey and Don can visit you and, and sign off on them and then you can process them, okay? Thank you very much. Yeah, and if Sylvia can just send us a, an email when she has them ready for us to sign. So I will we can do come that. in. Yes. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to move right along then. What we're going to look at next, we've done, we've dealt with the two consent and one minor variance. We're now moving on to the other minor variances that we've received. Uh, MO2 2020. It's an application from Mr. Len Smith and Miss E. e. Smith, owners of subject land known as plan 23M952 lot five Blue Heron Drive. Sylvie, would you give us the, uh, the report or presentation on this one, please? Yes, the owner is proposing to construct a new single detached dwelling that will contain a secondary dwelling unit. The secondary dwelling unit exceeds the permitted size and thus a minor variance is permitted. Description of proposed development. The subject property has a lot area 2.7 acres and a lot frontage of 53 meters on Blue Heron Drive and 95 meters of frontage on Abram Lake. The surrounding land uses include shoreline residential and rural residential properties. The applicants are proposing to construct a new single detached dwelling, which is to include an attached garage and a secondary dwelling on the, sec on the subject property. A variance to the zoning bylaws required to permit the secondary dwelling unit with a gross floor area of 67 square meters, which is 720 square feet, where a maximum gross area of 56 square meters or 603 square feet is permitted. The four tests of a minor variance. In considering this application, the committee needs to be satisfied that the proposal is in keeping with the four tests of a minor variance as set out in the Planning Act as follows. Number one, is the variance in keeping with the intent of the official plan? The subject property is located within the Drayton area and is designated as residential shoreline in the official plan. The official plan permits secondary dwelling units in all destinations where residential uses are permitted to a maximum of one dwelling unit per property. Only one dwelling is proposed. The proposed detached dwelling and accessory dwelling maintain generous setbacks to neighboring properties and to the shoreline. The proposed dwelling is to be located well set back from the shoreline to meet the minimum setbacks required in the zoning bylaws. The proposed variance is in keeping with the intent of the, the official plan. Number two is the variance in keeping with the intent of the zoning bylaw. The subject property is zoned residential shoreline exception one RS1 in the zoning bylaw and hazard lands HZ1 zone with the hazard lands limited to the shoreline area. 
A variance is required to permit a growth floor area of 67 square meters where the maximum growth floor area for secondary dwelling unit is 56 square meters. The intent of section 4.28 whereby the secondary unit shall not exceed 56 square meters of any portion of the principal dwelling that is located at or above grade is to ensure the secondary dwelling unit remains accessory to the principal use of the property. The proposed size of the secondary dwelling unit is to remain smaller than the proposed principal dwelling unit in the single detached dwelling and therefore is secondary or accessory to the main unit. The proposed variance is in keeping with the intent of the zoning bylaw. And number three, where the, will the variance provide for desirable development of land? The subject property is zoned for residential use. The development would appear to represent a desirable accessory use in the area. Number four, is the variance minor? Based on a review of the three previous tests, the proposed increase in size to the proposed secondary dwelling unit within the single detached dwelling is minor. And we have received some comments and I'll hand those over to Jody. Uh, we received comments from the Northwest Health Unit. The Northwest Health Unit has open file LDD005-20 in regards to this matter. We will not be able to process application and inspect properties in time to make comment in regard to the existing and future sewage systems by the hearing date. The Northwest Health Unit requests the condition be imposed as subject to comments from Northwest Health Unit. Um, Thank you, Jody. Uh, any other comments from the public? No, no other comments. Okay, so from my committee, is there any um, any comments or concerns or issues you'd like to have a conversation around? Uh, not really. I went and did a site I, visit. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, no, go ahead. Okay, it's Corey. Uh, I did go do a site visit, and I met uh, I met Mr. Smith out at the uh, out at his property. Uh, it's a fairly substantially large property. Um, and he sort of gave me the tour of what's going where, and to me, it it sort of fits in that in that area. So uh, it looks like it would be a good addition to what they're building there. Don, do you have anything further to add? Yes, um, I went. I went there as Corey same as Corey did, and I went to talk to the person just to find out what he was doing. Um, one note that, that bothers me on here is the Northwestern Health Unit. They're, are they taking too long to actually make a, a decision on, the, on that site before he starts building completely or not? Uh, Jody, I guess. Uh, I, it would seem that it would be nice if, if three weeks was enough time for them to get there to take a look. But uh, I mean, I've already told Stan when they first started building that he's going to have to get, you know, just for building permit purposes, we need to confirm that the septic field is sized appropriately for the addition of this. Because there already is an existing septic field there. So they're going to have to, they may have to make some upgrades to it potentially if it's not sized accordingly. So even from a building permit standpoint, that's one of my requirements as well. Okay. So basically, it's it's just going to be a condition on the application that the Northwest Health Unit needs to. Yeah, if we include yeah, that, they need to. Meet. Sorry. Yeah, if we include a condition that Northwest Health Unit must provide, yeah, comments, you know, perform their inspection to confirm. You know, if upgrades are necessary, if they reply saying everything looks good, then we're good to go. If not, then yeah, in a, in a perfect in a perfect world, Jody, we would really prefer to have them. And I know you're in discussions with them, and it would be good to share that with them. That we would really prefer to have their comments and any concerns prior to, especially if it's something fairly obvious, before you get to the um, um, to to the um, building permit stage. But having said that, it sounds like you've done that. It's COVID and it's, uh, it is these times. 
and I know people are um, they're responding slower than maybe what we normally would. And there's very little I think that we as a committee can do other than put that place that condition uh, as a as a condition of approval. Uh, um, as Jody said, it is a large large lot, right? Yeah, it's, yes, a big, it's bigger than a, a typical lakeshore lot, and there is lots of room there. So I don't foresee any issues with it. And it is just from looking at it, it looks like a pretty significantly sized field anyway. So it, it likely is sized appropriately anyway, which they should have all that on file. I would think it'd be a quick look at the original permit for the field to say yay or nay. But I guess they want to do a site okay. visit. Yeah, due diligence, understood. Any other comments from my committee? No, I'm good, thank you. None from Corey. Okay, so I need, uh, I, I don't see an issue with this. I think we can approve this because it is uh, minor in nature with the condition, of course, that we place on it. And so therefore we would be, uh, we would be looking at this application M02-2020 for lot five, Blue Heron Drive, seeking relief from section 4.285 of the zoning bylaw to permit an increased gross floor area for a secondary unit within the principal dwelling to permit a secondary dwelling unit within the principal dwelling that is 67 meters in size be approved with the following conditions. And that is that the Northwest Health Unit request the comments, comments be, they have requested, I don't wanna read it like that. Sorry, Sylvie. I want it to say that the Northwest Health Unit uh, will, we will require the Northwest with the, <laughs> get it, Northwest Health Unit uh, uh, approval to be a, con a condition of our approval or no. The Northwest Health Unit will, will have to provide, I guess it's approval. Yeah, at the end of the day, we need their approval for them to be able to do this. As a condition, as a as an condition condition of our approval, it doesn't sound very doesn't sound very uh, smooth, but essentially that's what we're saying. So I need a mover and a seconder. I'll move it, Don. Corey seconds. Okay, so the um, committee of adjustment moved by Don Fanlin, seconded by Corey Lego. Minor variance application MO2 2020 <clears throat> for a lot Blue Heron Drive, seeking release relief from the zoning bylaw to permit increased gross floor area for a secondary unit. The, there is one condition that we've imposed, and that is uh, the condition of the Northwest Health Unit being uh, providing approval before proceeding. All those in favor? Okay. Corey, yes. Good. Thank you. I can see your hand there, Corey. That's perfect. And that's moved. Okay. So the next one we have is another minor variance application. And this is minor variance M03-2020. It's an application for a minor variance that's been received from Mr. Carter Cran owner of subject and lands known locally as 13 Lincoln Drive, legally known plan M365, part lot nine, port, part lot 10. Owner is seeking relief from a lot line setback, the zoning bylaw for an accessory structure that is currently under construction. Sylvie, can you provide us with the presentation? Yes. Yeah. Description of proposed development. The subject property has a lot area of 697 square meters and a lot frontage of 46 meters along Lincoln Drive. The subject property is located on the corner of Lincoln Drive and Fuller Street. The purpose of the application is to permit the construction of an accessory structure, woodshed, that is located within the required minimum setbacks from the front line and the interior side lot line for an accessory structure. The proposed accessory structure is 35 square meters and is located 1.3 meters from the front lot line 
and 0 0.9 meters from the interior side lot line. The accessory structure is 35 square meters or 372 square feet in size. The zoning bylaw does not permit an accessory structure in the front yard and the required minimum setback is 1.5 meters from the interior side lot line. Four tests of minor variance. In considering this application, the committee needs to be satisfied that the proposal is in keeping with the four tests for minor variance as set out in the Planning Act as follows. Number one is the variance in keeping with the intent of the official plan. The subject property is located within the urban Sioux Lookout settlement area and is designated as residential in the official plan. Permitted uses include a range of residential uses and accessory uses. The woodshed is a permitted use. The accessory structure maintains the character of the neighborhood and is considered compatible with surrounding land uses. The existing vegetation may provide some screening from the adjacent property. The proposed variance is in keeping with the intent of the official plan. Number two is the variance in keeping with the intent of the zoning bylaw. The subject property is zoned residential type one R1. Variances are sought to permit an accessory structure in the front yard with a setback of 1.3 meters from the front lot line and a reduction to the minimum setback of 1.5 meters to 0 0.9 meters from the interior side lot line. Due to the unique curve shape of the subject property and closeness to the adjacent property, the proposed woodshed is located in the front yard. The purpose of the interior lot line setback is to ensure separation from the adjacent property and to allow for access on the side of the building. The adjacent property has a large side yard which provides separation from the proposed structure and there is an existing fence between the properties along the property line. The proposed structure will have a similar setback to the front line as the existing single detached dwelling on the property. The proposed variance is in keeping with the intent of the zoning bylaw. Number three, will the variance provide for a desirable development of land? The subject property is zoned for residential use. The proposed development would appear to represent a desirable accessory use and does not cause any adverse impacts to adjacent properties based on the site characteristics, which includes the existing trees. Is the variance minor? Based on a review of the three previous tests of a minor variance, the proposed accessory structure to be located within the front, required front yard and within the required setback for accessory structures from an interior lot line is minor. And we did receive some comments and I'll hand that over to Jody again. Okay, we received uh, one comment from uh, Stephen Bowles, who I believe is the adjacent neighbor and he supports the application. And that was it. Oh, that's awesome, I like that. <laughs> okay, um, is there uh, anything else that uh, Jody that we need to know about from the municipality or any others? Well, this, uh, if you guys took a look at it, but it is kind of a unique lot in town. And the, it, would, it would seem the, the road allowance takes away a lot of the property. Uh, Carter is here, I believe he can, if he wanted to, can speak to some of that. But it's, I think in a, a typical residential neighborhood, having the uh, woodshed in your front yard may not work, but I think because of the uni uniqueness of the area and the lot, I don't think it would be an issue. Thank you for that. I was going to maybe comment on the fact that it's not, it's not usual that you see a woodshed in a front yard. And I guess one of the concerns may be access to that woodshed. Um, I, I know the area, of course, I used to live across the street. And um, just wondering how, how Mr. Cron, and we can, we can ask him how he plans to access that woodshed and if he'll be traveling across his front yard because that's, that's basically how it looks right now, which is, I, I mean, that's to his detriment, not to anybody else's, but uh, certainly couldn't leave any parked vehicles or what have you in that, in that location. So what you're asking is how, basically, how am I going to get my wood to there? Or, or what more specifically are you asking about that? 
Um, is, is, I, that, I guess, is that how? No, go ahead. No, go ahead. That's exactly what I'm asking. Okay. Does it make so, sense to have it on the other? To me, it makes sense to have it on the other side where the driveway is. And so that's what I'm asking. Right. And so we used to have <clears throat> actually the picture that, that you have of the overview of our property, the satellite view actually has where we used to have our wood uh, on the north side of the property. And then that's hauling it all the way across. And so it was, we, we've just, um, with the person that we have delivering, it's easy access on that side. So we're accessing that from our front yard, backing in with my truck, and then being able to put uh, the wood on that side. Um, and with the, the lack of property on the north, it doesn't leave a lot of room uh, for what we would hope to do with that property. And so I'm trying to make a shed that's actually going to be very pleasing to the eye. And um, this really is the only place in which I could probably put that on my property. And so, and that's actually one of the comments that I, when I was talking with Steve and Judy, the neighbor, uh, Steve was the one with the comment that he approves and he's the one that's just to the south of us there. So he's the one that would be most directly impacted by the shed. And he said, where else would you put it? I don't know where else on your property you could actually put that shed. So um, that's one of the reasons why he has the approval on that as well. And also just the distance that it'll create and then the barrier that it somewhat creates between the properties. It gives us a little privacy where we don't really have much privacy at all um, on that property. And so for those reasons and ease of access, it is actually not bad for us to get it through our front yard into that shed. Okay, thank you, Mr. Cron. Uh, my committee, is there any other comments, discussion points? Uh, no, I don't have any comments. Uh, he did his due diligence. He went oops and went to his neighbor, and his neighbor says it's fine. So I'm I'm quite content with uh, with finishing up his uh, woodshed. <laughs> I have no comment. Also, Donna, on that property. Okay. Thank you. It, uh, to me, uh, it looks good. It's a, it's a really nice, beautiful woodshed. <laughs> if I had to live next to one, that's what I would want as well. So uh, kudos to you, Mr. Cron. Okay, so I need a, uh, a mover and a seconder. Corey moves. Seconded, done. Okay, so the Corporation Municipality of Sioux Lookout, Committee of Adjustment. Um, moved by Corey Lego, seconded by Donald Fenlon, that the minor variance application M03-2020 for 13 Lincoln Drive to seek relief from section 4.2.31 to permit accessory structure in the front yard and section 4.2.32 to reduce the minimum interior side lot line setback requirement. One accessory structure is permitted to be located 1.3 meters from the lot line and 0 0.9 meters from the interior side lot line. All those in favor? Yeah? Corey, yes. I see a hand. Oh, perfect. I see them both. Thank you. It's been and carried. Okay, so that deals with that one. We have another, we have our final minor variance. And this is a minor variance M04-2020 and it's 766 Drayton. Applicant for a minor variance has been received from Mr. Stephen ba Stephan Bauer and Ms. Jana Kepler, owners of subject land 766 Drayton Road, uh, legally known as lot 10 part 23R14518 parts one and three. Applicants are proposing to construct a detached garage with an accessory dwelling on the second story. The applicants are also proposing a single detached dwelling on the subject lands to be constructed at a later date. Sylvie, can you give us the presentation, please? Yes, thank you. 
Description of proposed development. The subject property has a lot area of two acres, a lot frontage of 57 meters on Drayton Road, and 45 meters of frontage on Abram Lake. The purpose of the application is to seek relief from sections 4.29, 4.293, and 4.298 of the zoning bylaw to permit a secondary dwelling unit with an increased gross floor area on the second story of a detached garage. The four tests of a minor variance. In considering this application, the committee needs to be satisfied that the proposal is in keeping with the four tests of a minor variance as set out in the Planning Act as follows. Number one, is the variance in keeping with the intent of the official plan? The subject property is located within the Drayton area and is designated as residential shoreline in the official plan. The official plan permits secondary dwelling units in all designations where residential uses are permitted to a maximum of one dwelling unit per property. Accessory buildings are permitted in the official plan. The proposed two-story private garage with secondary dwelling unit is incidental and accessory to the principal residential dwelling units on the subject property. The proposed development maintains generous setbacks to neighboring properties with a proposed setback of 60 meters on the shoreline. The proposed variance is in keeping with the intent of the official plan. Number two is the variance in keeping with the intent of the zoning bylaw. The subject property is zoned residential shoreline RS in the zoning bylaw. The permitted uses of the RS zone include a single detached dwelling and accessory uses. Secondary dwelling units are permitted within accessory units in the RS zone if the minimum requirements are met. Variances to the zoning bylaw are sought. Number one, to permit a secondary dwelling unit within an accessory building on a lot within the RS zone that does not meet the minimum lot area of 10,000 square meters. The subject property has a lot area of 8,000 meters. Number two, to permit a secondary dwelling unit with an accessory, within an accessory building that exceeds 56 square meters. The proposed secondary dwelling unit is 67.5 square meters and also includes a covered deck of 19 square meters. Number three, to permit a secondary dwelling unit within a full second story of a detached garage, the zoning bylaw permits a secondary dwelling unit in the upper half, half story of a detached garage. The proposed variances are in keeping with the intent of the zoning bylaw. And number three, will the variance provide for desirable development of land? The subject property is zoned for residential use and is located in the area of other multiple residential uses. The proposed development would appear to represent a desirable accessory use and does not cause any adverse impacts to adjacent properties or activities or change the character of the area. And number four is the variance minor. Based on a review of the three previous tests, the proposed variances could be considered minor and the four tests have been met. And we received um, several comments and um, Jody will read those to you. Yeah, but before we get into the comments, Jody, if I could just ask you to hold for one minute, I would like uh, Jamie, because there was some discussion that took place. Uh, there was a letter email that came back and forth with respect to the variances and the zoning bylaws and the official plan and, and whether uh, they had to apply under all of these three items. Jamie, could you maybe address some of that just for our, because we do have the, um, we do have the applicants here present. Yes, certainly. So um, the, the planning report speaks to three variances. Uh, the second variance was included out of an abundance of caution and it related to lot size, but upon further review, uh, provided the lot is the 0 0.8 hectares that uh, the applicants have indicated, there'd be no variance required for that, uh, that provision of the bylaw. So what effectively the variances are for in, on, in this instance, and just to make it clear that uh, secondary units are permitted by the zoning bylaw in the residential shoreline zone. So what the proposed variance is specifically for is to first allow for a, a slightly larger secondary unit than what's permitted by the bylaw. 
what's permitted by the zoning bylaw is a secondary unit with um, of 56 square meters in size or 603 square feet. And what's proposed is a secondary unit of 67.5 square meters or 525 square feet. So just about an increase of 120 square feet is, uh, is what the variance is seeking. And then the second component of it is really um, what the bylaw envisioned was that you'd have a peaked structure as a garage and that your secondary unit would be permitted in within the, the peak or the half story above the first story. This structure is, uh, does not have a peaked roof. It has a, it, uh, more or less of a flat roof. It's, it's sloped from one side to the other. So just uh, out of an abundance of caution for that section, we don't believe the bylaw contemplated this style of design not to say it's not appropriate or not, it just was not contemplated. And that's the reason that the variance um, is required for that provision. Um, so what the key factor here, factors here are in the variance, I believe from a planning perspective is, um, is the size increase, is it appropriate? The location of this proposed second unit on the property does comply with all elements of the zoning bylaw. It's really, is that increased size of a, an additional 120, uh, square, uh, 120 square feet appropriate. And um, from a height perspective, the building also meets the height requirements of the zoning bylaw as well. So that's just hopefully provides a little bit of additional clarity to the, uh, the committee. We did also have some comments from one neighbor indicating that when they tried to construct a secondary unit, they were not permitted to do so. Just of note to that is the planning documents in the municipality have been updated in recent years. So there are have been some changes made um, to allow for secondary units. And that is to implement uh, changes that have been made by the province to the Planning Act that require municipalities to allow for secondary units, both in principal buildings, but also in accessory buildings. So for those reasons, um, we believe that the proposed variance was minor in nature. And I should also just add as Sylvia indicated was that this building would function as a principal building on the lot until such time that a, that a future dwelling is proposed to be constructed. So this this building could be built right now as of right, um, but then there could be an issue further down the line in terms of constructing the, the principal dwelling property in the future or a, a main dwelling. So the intent was to uh, to bring forward the minor variance at this time as it demonstrates the complete build out of the property and the full plans that the proponents have in mind and wanted to make that clear up front. So hopefully that helps. If there's any questions, I can do my best to try to answer them. Thank, thank you, Jamie. Is there is there any questions with respect to what Jamie has just provided in addition to the, the presentation from my committee? Uh, I'm, I'm Go just, ahead, uh, Jody. Uh, oh. oh, sorry. Jody, if you want to speak on something, um, go ahead. No, no, that's fine, Corey. I just, I didn't mean to cut you off. I was just going to ask Jody for the comments that we received, but okay, if you yeah. have uh, something you'd like to share before we move. Oh, no, I just wanted to thank for the clarification for the, the height of the, the dwelling. I wasn't too sure on that. I couldn't find that in the, for the secondary dwelling. Is this going to be a primary dwelling then, right now? Oh, you're on mute there, Jamie. Uh, yes, through well, your well, work. You know what? Three, well, Madam Chair. Okay. It is proposed to be the primary dwelling. It will be the primary dwelling on the site um, until such time that a principal dwelling, another dwelling is constructed in the future, at which time it would then become the secondary dwelling. Uh, it's a little bit confusing, right. but uh, that is what's being proposed here. And it's intended, the reason that the application's been being made now and not in the future when that a new dwelling's proposed is to give a complete picture and a, an idea of the, what the build out of the property will look like. Okay, okay Corey? Yeah, I'm good. Thanks. Okay. Jody, you want to share comments that we've received? Sure. So Northwest Health Unit has commented uh, as well. We will not be able to process 
application inspect properties in time to make a comment in regards to existing and future sewage systems by the hearing date. The Northwest Health Unit requests a condition be imposed as subject to comments from Northwest Health Unit. And then we received comments from the public. <clears throat> this is from uh, Fran and Lillian Donnelly, ac Acting Executors, Daryl Donnelly and Colleen Clan. Dear Sylvia, as per our conversation this morning of 08-31-2020 concerning the construction of a building site at 766 Drayton Road for Bauer Stephen. We, Francis and Lillian Donnelly of 778 Drayton Road, <clears throat> are in disagreement with the construction plans of Tomlinson Drafting Services for said project Bauer. New residents. Our worry is the closeness and height, the height of the garage and rental accommodations to our property line possibly the other side of the property. Oh, sorry, and if possible, move it further from the property line, possibly to the other side of the property. We were against the division of the property for this very reason. We knew that a smaller piece of land would bring buildings closer to our property. This will create a value loss on our property and possibly make it harder to sell. <clears throat> People move out of town to be away from exactly what is happening to us. Uh, this one is from Calling Clan on behalf of Fran and Will Donnelly. To whom it may concern, please note that I am strongly against the village being proposed on the small parcel of land adjacent to my parents. The height of the secondary dwelling will be an eyesore, towering above the trees and looking down upon my parents' deck. <clears throat> this, could turn, this in turn could devalue their property and discourage potential future buyers. Aside from the minor variance concerns, Septic runoff could also be an issue based on the total number of bedrooms being proposed. Another issue with this proposal is their plan for short-term rentals for tourism or professionals. In summary, I'm against all items listed in the minor variance, noting that the zoning bylaws should be adhered to. Uh, this is from Caitlin Mosier. Uh, Committee of Adjustment Members, I am writing to express my views and objections on this minor variance that is being applied for at 766 Drayton Road. A second dwelling unit with a basement garage and then an apartment over the garage, making it a height of 10.2 meters, 33 feet. This would be the highest building on the road and be a complete eyesore to my grandparents who live next door. Having a building looking over their house taking away from the privacy they've enjoyed for over 50 years, not to mention the comings and goings of random people once the house is actually built. They're very much, they very much enjoy the quiet and peaceful privacy of their home and also object to this application. Allowing this application to proceed will push more people down the road to have three-story apartment buildings on the back of their lots because most lots in Drayton's, Drayton are larger than this one and have the actual space. This area is not for apartments and transients, comings and goings. Having a neighbor is fine, but paying the taxes you pay to live on that road, you should be able to expect the, to be able to keep your privacy at least intact. Also within the application, it would be nice for the property to be drawn out for where the plan is to put said second dwellings, house and septic field, to give everyone a better look at everything. Most residents down that way will may have, way, have lived there for years and are not happy with this. As you will see the objections with the objections you will get for tomorrow's meeting. I hope that these objections are taken into consideration and not just thrown aside. Thank you for considering my objections in your ruling. Uh, this one is from Angie Lilly. To whom it may concern, I am writing this letter to the to let you know I disagree with an apartment being built on Drayton Road, number 766. I live next door and bought this property because it was a rural area. Thank you, Angie Litter. And then we have uh, from Amy and Chuck Coates at 794 Drayton Road. Committee of Adjustment Members, I'm writing this letter in regards to the minor variance 
for 766 Drayton Road, Sioux Lookout, a second dwelling unit with a basement garage and apartment over the garage. If this application is approved for the second dwelling with the intent for a rental unit, then the municipality needs to be prepared to allow all other property owners to do the same with their property, as this will set a precedent for Lakeshore property, residential properties within the municipality of Sioux Lookout. The subject property is one of the smaller lots on the road compared to most other Lakeshore lots. Is the subject property large enough to allow a proper sized septic field to accommodate the two dwellings proposed. The current zoning does not allow for two dwellings. Is the municipality prepared to change the zoning of Lakeshore residential homes? As owners of 794 Drayton Road, we inquired about this when we built our home and we're not even given the option to apply for a minor variance and we are outright told this would not be allowed. And that's it. Thank you, Jody. I guess the comment that I would make is um, on the, the last comment that we received from uh, the neighbors is that this isn't uh, two separate dwellings, but in, in fact, it is an auxiliary building that will be used in, they're just, as Jamie shared, they're sharing the entire picture with us at this point. And I think that's a good thing. Of course, we will add from the Northwest Health Unit that we, they will require approval and that be imposed as a condition of our approval prior to going forward. I guess the other comment I'd like to make is I've looked at, I, I went to the site and, and it's, it is a, a large enough lot. It's point, point 0.8 hectare and that's, it's, it's a fair size lot. There's, there's some, some challenges absolutely with, the, with this lot and with the, uh, the bedrock that's in place, but I'm sure this young couple recognize that and they're dealing with it as best as they can. Um, most of these houses or I, I would say most of these these folks were camps that were down this road and as as the, our community grows and um, our urban fabric is expanding, it's becoming part of and that's a challenge in itself because folks that are there perhaps don't appreciate the fact that um, they're being encroached on and things are changing. Uh, but you can't stop, you can't stop development. I mean, that's I, my biggest concern. And I think Jamie addressed it was the height of this building uh, in the in meters and what the bylaw and whether it was indeed within the, um, as Corey shared, within the, uh, within the guidelines uh, of the bylaw, within the imposed restrictions. And it sounds like it is. So having said all that, I, I, I don't see an issue with this at all. We're, we're essentially doing, doing two things here, permitting a larger square foot area. And, and unfortunately, I, I, just another comment is the picture that you provided from your architectural rendering, it was not a, it was not a good one. It didn't show accurately or properly how the two buildings will align. In fact, it looked a lot larger, if you will, um, largesse, if you will, and then I think at the end of the day, it will be on the site plan that was adjacent to it. So comments from my committee, further comments, concerns? I have no other issues. So I have no issues with this. Uh, the only issue would be um, the, the slope of the, uh, the property runs to the north, and if there's a drainage issue with it going into the neighbor's lot, it doesn't look like there's a lot of separation between two. It looks like water runs down that way anyway. Um, I don't know if there's been issues before, um, but I, I would think that uh, a, the drainage would, would need to be looked at, especially like uh, Jamie was saying with the slope of the one roof and where the drainage of water is gonna go off of that roof. Um, so I don't know, that's, that's my, my main concern along with the Northwest Health Unit and having uh, sufficient uh, septic uh, in that area. For, for the for the resident uh, residential spots. Thank you, Corey. Uh, Don. You have to take your mute off, Don. Donald, take your mute off. Yeah, that's better. Yes, I was out there yesterday afternoon after the rain stopped and uh, looking around and they got some challenges putting putting houses up in there for that's a sure thing. Um, uh, one thing I did notice is that the drainage is uh, 
leaning, coming down the driveway and leaning towards the uh, property on the right hand side. I don't know whose that is, but but yeah, I, I, drainage is going to be an issue for for people and for the way the drainage is moving down. And I, I think we have to make note of that on on the uh, application. That a, I don't know if Jody can put a drainage study in on that or or what he recommends to do with it. Well, through the uh, building permit process, we can ask that a site grading plan kind of be developed. I think they might already kind of have one, but just, yeah, to show where they intend on <clears throat> uh, sending the drainage and that, you know, that they can't negatively affect the, the adjacent properties. So yeah, um, so oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Uh, just the other issue would be the, um, having ample parking on that lot. But just uh, under the uh, secondary dwelling, that they yeah, need to have an extra parking. So that should be in there as well. Okay. Yeah, ab absolutely. They're going. This this uh, applicant's going to have to look at a site plan that uh, is full, further developed and that works better uh, with the topography that they have in place, because there's going to be the drainage issues. I mean, and I think that all comes with the building permit piece. Correct me if I'm wrong, Jody. Yeah, that's something we look at through the building permit process. So I, I, I don't think that we need to put it as a condition. I think the only condition that we need to, to impose if we do is the, the health unit uh, requiring a condition of approval for, the, for their work there. Um, Mr. Uh, Bauer um, did share a letter and I, I think he does want to speak to us and I want to give him an opportunity as well to, uh, to share some of his, his um, concerns, issues and thoughts. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks for letting us speak here. I, uh, I guess right off the bat here, I just kind of wanted to go over the, the other issue that you identified, this, the drainage. And I want you guys to know that what we've got there now is, is temporary for our building process. Basically, we were having uh, issues with the drainage on our driveway and it was turning into a mud sluice, so we had to do something. And, and what we did was kind of direct a little bit of the water off the road and off to the one side there. Uh, but in our, our grand plan, what we all said and done is the, the driveway, we want to have it going down the, the one side of the lot and directing the drainage towards the interior of the lot. Because uh, we want to do some gardening in there and then basically the drainage is going to work through the interior of the lot down towards the lake that way and, and should not move into the, the neighbor's lot all said and done. Just it's, as the time is right now, the way we're trying to get in there for the construction is, has made the water go into his lot for the meantime, but that's by no means permanent. We don't want it moving that way at all. Um, and then, yeah, the other point, I guess, is with all the uh, all the comments from the, the public, uh, it really feels like that they've got the impression we're trying to build a, what was it, a village was used in one of the comments there. And that's or a complex. <laughs> a complex, simply not the case. We're, we're going for a, a small home with a, another small kind of guest house on the side that we can, we can house friends and guests and then family members kind of a thing as it comes up and maybe do like an Airbnb or just a BNB type thing to, to make some some profits on the side if need be but if we can keep it empty I think that's probably going to be our goal just for anybody who shows up and visits to kind of stay in there or our parents as they age or like a quiet tenant I work with the hospital and healthcare professionals at the hospital are always pretty desperate for places I think my coworker, who's an occupational therapist has been in for two months so that'd be the type of person we'd love to have as a tenant or something one day um, but yeah, that was uh, pretty much everything we'd like to talk about there. It sounds like everything's good otherwise. I have one question. I'm looking at the diagram that's uh, that was supplied with it, this one here. Is that the granular stuff down the middle of the road there? Or the, well, the middle so, of the road? Yeah, so this drawing Sorry to just barge in there. This drawing kind of comes from our uh, our four permit drawings from our drafts person. And at that point in time, we have the the building is all figured out and our, our rough location is figured out. But uh, what's actually happened is they, uh, they kind of put the road right down the middle where I had it as like a rough idea. 
in actuality, this road is going to be sticking towards the, the right-hand side of, of the lot. Additionally, the lot lines themselves in this portrayal are a little bit off. Um, so like this, this lot plan itself, while is somewhat accurate, isn't entirely accurate. And we've since had more accurate drawings from our, uh, from our drafts people, which I believe I forwarded on to, to Jody. Um, Jody, if you haven't received those, let me know. Uh, but yeah, the, the, the driveway itself should be more towards the right side of that drawing. Um, and then the, uh, the lot lines themselves are a lot more square than what's portrayed on here. Hmm. Okay. Uh, oh, I, got do you, I have a question. Uh, do you have a square footage of what your primary house would be, or have you got that far? Uh, we we've got a rough idea. Um, I think we're looking at uh, what was it a thirty six by three, basically one thousand one hundred forty square foot on like the the main floor, and we're trying to do like a a two floor type thing, but have a an open end of it, so you kind of get lots of open view. We can see out the windows from both stories, kind of a thing. So okay. part of it's going to be sort of sunken into the rock there. Yeah, the 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 garage portion with the basement is. Uh, I guess you went out there. I don't know if you saw. Yeah. There was like a, basically what looks like a, a basketball court slab of bedrock, and that's that's where the basement is going to go is on that slab. And then if you saw to the left of that, there was the higher bedrock, and we have some yeah. log stored up there. Basically, the height of those logs is going to be the main floor elevation. Okay. And uh, it's it's everything that's below that is what we kind of desire to fill in, and a basement just seemed better than aggregate. It's more useful. Yeah. We um, wanted okay. everything to be on one level so that we could live there forever and have it be accessible when we're old. Okay, thank you. I have a, one one last question. It's more for Jamie than it is for for Stefan. Jamie, um, the height the height of this building and the the appearance of because that seemed to be one of the the um, larger concerns from from neighbors, um, and it's hard to visually um, sort of see that or or envision it. Uh, what is the bylaw? What is the the zoning? two stories like how does uh, what is you know, what is the guideline so madam chair the the bylaw for accessory buildings contains two different height measurements and it depends on the use of the building so accessory buildings that are used for accessory dwelling units are permitted a height of 12 meters uh, and this that is the intended use for this building so the proposed building would comply with that proposed, with that uh, height requirement in the bylaw, and there's no variance needed for that. Thank you, um, Sylvie. I, I want to make sure that's reflected in the minutes. Should should anybody come back and and want to? Yes, clear, some sure. clarity around that. Yep, you, I've got that, Donna. So if okay, just maybe you. elaborate on that. It's in uh, it's in section four point two point four of the bylaw, which I can read it. It says the height of any accessory building or structure shall not exceed one story or five point five meters unless the building is a permitted accessory dwelling, in which case the maximum height should be twelve meters. And just to be clear, quite a few of those meters are gonna appear below ground level. Like, so I think three stories sounds crazy, but you, it won't It's a basement. Look, we won't look we crazy. understand, it's, a, it's yeah. a basement. It won't look crazy. And I, so, I know that, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I know that the Donnellys uh, and their relatives seem very concerned about how close the uh, garage with above guest house would be to their lot line, but it's actually a, it's on the other side of the lot. It's on Andrew Lilly's side. It, it's literally, I think it's going to be 23 meters from their lot line. And even once our house is built, it's going to be like 10 meters from the lot line. We want lots of privacy and trees as well. I think there's just a lot of miss understanding or miscommunication. 
thank you. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, and, and that's something you're going to have to work with your neighbors on <laughs> building those bridges again. <laughs> I did see, uh, I did see the letter that, uh, that uh, was written by the two of you. And there is, uh, there is going to be some mending of bridges in the future for sure. We had no um, idea. <laughs> we did not expect this. Oh, that's why life gives us these challenges. So um, my committee, back to my committee, is there any other comments or um, issues that need to be shared? Questions? No, I, I think everything has been covered. None for me. Um, I'm good, thank you. Can, uh, just a quick question to Jamie. Can I remove the, uh, the one piece here that seeks relief from... Uh, from the a minimum lot area? Can you I can, remove yeah. that from our? Yeah. Okay. Yes, you can. Okay. So I need a mover and a seconder and I only have the one condition. Is that correct, uh, gentlemen? Or did you, did you want, I, I think we can leave the drainage. Jody is fully aware of it. And I think we can leave that with the building permit. Yeah. So the one condition that we'd place on this approval is the Northwest Health Unit approval imposed as a condition of our approval. Yes. Okay. So who wants to move this? Kate, Don, we'll move it. And Corey, Corey seconds. will second. Perfect. So, Committee of Adjustment moved by Don Fenlon, seconded by Corey Lego, that the minor variance application M04-2020 for 766 Drayton Road, uh, under section 4.2.93, permit a secondary dwelling unit within an accessory building with an increased gross floor area, and section 4.298 to permit a secondary dwelling unit on a second story of a detached garage to permit secondary dwelling unit that is 67.5 square meters and a covered deck 19 square meters on the subject property within the accessory building. The one condition is that the Northwest Health Unit approval is imposed as a condition of our approval. All those in favor? And it's passed. Yes. It's carried. So there you guys go, you're off to the races. Thank you so much. Thank you. No problem. Okay. So, um, I, I'm sorry I missed the first half hour of this meeting. And uh, that was my um, craziness with not knowing how to use technology properly. But I'm assuming that the chair announced, uh, Donald, at that time about public hearing in the 20 day appeal process. Did you cover that? Yes, you did. Okay, perfect. Thank you. I just wanted to make sure that was stated. And um, do we, Sylvie, do we have any new business? Okay, did we lose Sylvie? Sylvie? Uh, sorry, just she's got to hit star six here. <laughs> Any new or old business, uh, Sylvie? Okay. Okay, I'm good now. So you're on mute. Oh, Okay, <laughs> Sylvie, is there any old business or any new business? There is no old business at this time, and there is no new business. Then I have a, um, a motion on the floor. I need a mover and a seconder for adjournment. Can I go with Corey and Dawn? Yes, you can. Good. Um, all right. So good job tonight, guys. A bit of a challenge, but I think we, we muddled our way through it. Mostly the challenge was on my part, and I apologize. <laughs> um, it's all good. Committee of Adjustment. Yeah, thanks. Committee of Adjustment moved by Corey Lego, seconded by Dawn Fenlon, that the Committee of Adjustment meeting of September 1st, 2020 is adjourned. All those in favor? Favor. And that's carried. Thanks, everybody. Thank yeah, you, everybody. Thank you. Okay. Thank Take you. care. Thanks so much. Okay. Night. Night.